welcome to my home. Just kidding, but actually not really because I have been living out of this suitcase for months now. So I'm going to uh, give you a full tour of everything that I take with me for full-time travel. Inside. As you can see, I have it pretty well organized in here and it almost reminds me of like how van life people talk about packing because if things get really disorganized, it just feels terrible. It's really difficult to find everything. And for me, I've been changing hotel rooms almost every single day for I think like 95 days at this point. So if all of my stuff isn't really easy to get out and in, I waste so much time packing every day. So let's just jump straight into it. Here I have, as you can see, I've been using quite a bit of packing cubes to enhance the organization, which is actually something that I only started to do recently and it's been an absolute game changer. In this one, I have a bunch of shorts for different reasons. I have both exercise shorts, I have two pairs, um, and I also have four pairs of regular shorts and I make sure to get shorts that are like a length that is pretty appropriate as to not really get too much unwanted attention when I'm walking around different places. Next up, this is by far the bulk of the clothing that I have and it's like pants and leggings. In here I have four different pairs of leggings. I have been doing a lot of travel uh, in the car, on planes, and it's really important to have some nice comfortable clothing to be doing that in also for exercising. So I've got four pairs of leggings and I also have four different pairs of pants. I think it's also really important for me especially to have kind of a, almost like an unnecessary amount of clothing because as a creator, especially for taking photos for Instagram and things like that, I need to have like a variety of outfits. So maybe it doesn't look like I'm necessarily wearing the exact same thing every day. And for kind of that same reason of having like a diversity of looks when I'm traveling, which by the way is completely unnecessary uh, up until this point, especially over the past couple of years, I, as I was traveling to every country in the world, I was only traveling with a carry-on, so the most basic essentials possible. So you can do probably realistically without at least half of these things. And also it depends a lot on how often you're gonna be predicting that you can do laundry when you're traveling. But another kind of unnecessary amount of things that I have with me are my shirts and especially my tank tops. So in this one, I have bunch of different shirts. Also another thing that I do, especially to be able to match a lot of different outfits is I kind of choose a color palette. So for me, it's a lot of neutrals and like natural colors. So I wear a lot of green, a lot of white, and also browns. So I usually kind of keep everything in that color wheel so that I can mix and match everything. But I actually only have, I think, six shirts with me and <laughs> It really gets out of control with the tank tops. I'm definitely a tank top person. I have 10 tank tops, which is definitely also unnecessary. But the reason why I have so many different ones is that I like to usually wear kind of like crop tops and shirts like the one that I'm wearing now. It's the ones that I feel most comfortable with. It goes with the majority of kind of like my high-waisted pants, but uh, that doesn't really fly in a lot of the different, more conservative countries that I've been going to. Just in the past 90 days alone, I've been to uh, Muslim countries, Christian countries, uh, Buddhist, Hindu, a lot of different places that have kind of different um, 
perspectives when it comes to how conservative uh, women especially should be dressing and I like to go to different places like temples and mosques and things like that that require you to cover your knees and to recover your uh, and to cover your shoulders and not have like midriff showing so I make sure to bring a lot of very variations of clothes to make sure that I'm going to be able to kind of integrate as smoothly as possible into the certain culture that I'm traveling in. And I also have a couple of different tank tops that are great for exercising, I've been running, and going to the gym whenever I can on the road, which is really difficult, but I have a little bit of something for everything, which is kind of what you're gonna be seeing throughout this entire video. Then next up, some of the smaller things that I've got in here, socks, underwear, and bras. I have, I think, 14 or 15 pairs of underwear because if I don't have the ability to do laundry because I'm moving so often, the underwear is the number one thing that I wanna have the most of. I also have 10 pairs of socks. When it comes to bras, I have like two normal bras and I have four sports bras. And these are kind of like the smaller things that really don't take up too much space and really make a huge difference when you don't have the ability to do laundry too often. In this whole front section of my suitcase, it's way more organized, especially because I don't want anything to like fall out. And again, all of like the everyday clothes, I'm in these bags constantly. I want to have as organized as possible, but don't be don't be deceived. I have a much less well organized section of my bag back here, which is dedicated to all these like miscellaneous things that don't really make sense to have in my packing cubes. And also, I've been traveling to a lot of different regions that are having different weather. So everything from kind of like summer in Europe, uh, spring in Australia uh, to now I'm actually filming this video in a little mountain lodge in Bhutan <laughs> so and we're going into winter right now actually all of the electricity in this place is out right now and that means there's no heater and it's been absolutely freezing at night so I also packed for a huge range of temperatures which usually when you're packing means layers also for me i have three different jackets that i cycle through and it's almost like having a really light jacket this one's also great for exercising and i have a medium one that's a little bit more stylish and then i've got a nice heavy jacket this one's also really soft and cozy to bring on flights uh, and takes some of the weight out of my luggage when I'm going on planes and it doubles as a nice little pillow. So I got these guys over there. Then I have only two pairs of long sleeve uh, shirts. One of them is a thermal, which is great again for being in like the winter time. I also have this guy, which is potentially even like my most versatile piece of clothing. It's just a basic long sleeve and it's really long so that it covers a lot of like area and this has been really great for traveling in some of the more, again, like conservative places where I really want to be covered up but if it's hot I don't want to be too hot. So this one is something that I keep basically in my day pack everywhere that I go. It's such a useful piece of clothing. Then for when it comes to like dressing up and, and looking nice and going out and those kind of things, I don't really do much of that when I'm traveling, but just in case the opportunity presents itself to go to like a nice little dinner or something like that, I don't want to look like I'm like a backpacker living out of my suitcase. So I usually bring like one slightly nicer dress. This one's like a little black velvet dress for those random nights out that really don't happen very often. And then I have a bit more of like a travel -y dress that's nice to take some photos in as well. In this little packing cube I have five different belts. These belts 
fit all of the different pants and shorts that I have as well as my dresses. Again, this is such an unnecessary amount of belts to be traveling with, but because I do like to look nice when I'm going to all of these places, I'm constantly on camera, it is worth it for me to pack a bit more stuff these days for that reason alone. And on that note, actually, is one of my most unnecessary things that I travel with is a steamer. As I'm sure if you've traveled and put stuff in bags before, you know exactly how wrinkly it gets. Like for example, one of my favorite uh, types of fabrics to wear is silk. And when you put silk in a carry-on or a, a suitcase, it looks like this, which looks really silly when you wear it. So it's just like one of those extra little luxuries that I like to have from home is bringing this steamer and before I go out for a shoot or go out for the day just to walk around and everything, sometimes I'll take a little extra step and steam some of my clothing. I honestly haven't found like a very reliable steamer yet. I've tried like four of them because they always break. This one is currently tidying me over, but they are a little bit tricky to find the right ones. Then, when it comes to shoes, I have about five different pairs of shoes. Again, pretty unnecessary. But one of them is some running shoes to motivate me to kind of get into <laughs> working out as much as I can when I'm on the road, which is always really hard. I also have Two different pairs of flip-flops. This one is also unnecessary, but they're so small. They're easy to pack away. Having two colors is nice to match it to your little outfit for the day. I have these boots that I'm wearing right now, which are basically the boots that I wear every single day. I also have a bit of a fancier pair of like heeled boots, which is in that guy right there, which we'll get into. And I also have a more pair, uh, a more thick pair of winter boots that I can go hiking in and stay warm. There's a couple of other like miscellaneous things. I've got a bikini, I've got a cute little tote bag for my friend Svenja to put my laptop in when I wanna go work in a cafe. And if I have too much stuff or I buy some souvenirs, I have a little extra tote bag for that, which is always helpful. I have a little pair of sweats for when I want to just lounge around hotel rooms, work on my computer, stuff like that. And another thing that's great is having some scarves. This can be really helpful again for when you want to go into temples, uh, mosques, monasteries, things like that, that do want you to cover your head or just again be as conservative and covered as possible. I always recommend having at least one scarf in your bag. Then, another ridiculously large bit of packing that I have in here are my toiletries. And this one is absolutely massive. And <laughs> the reason why I don't have anything that's travel sized is that it's kind of pointless when I'm gone for so long. I go through a lot of shampoo, conditioner, uh, body wash, um, I have a facial like skin cleanser in here, deodorants, everything like that, that when you're gone for months and months and months at a time, you just have to have like the full size. So this really takes up a huge bulk, but I also really love having some of these like extra items in here that can be kind of unnecessary. Like I have a little face toner mist, I've got, uh, this is a lifesaver, I have dry shampoo, which is also really helpful, um, and a bunch of different like various skincare uh, like products that are really helpful. Because one of the things that I like to do to keep myself grounded when I'm traveling is every night I turn on some nice music, I get the nice lighting going, and I do my skincare routine and listen to podcasts and stuff like that makes me just have like a little bit of a routine and normalcy, so it's worth bringing some extra stuff for. This other toiletry bag I love. I've got like a nice little wooden hairbrush. When you're staying in hotel rooms that don't have much uh, space on the counters, it actually has this little hidden hook, which then drops down so you can hang all of your 
toiletries. And in this one, I have everything from my toothbrush, razor, uh, sunscreen, toothpaste. These are all like the things that I use every single night that are a little bit smaller and could get lost in this big, big bag. I've got a hairband for when I'm doing my skincare routine. I've got a little bag full of these different pieces of jewelry because I like to switch that up all the time as well. And what else? We've got, yeah, razor, extra Advil, Tylenol. Um, I've got nail clippers, toothpicks, all of those type of fun things, uh, hair oil, sunscreen, you name it. And they all just collapse down into this little toiletry bag. I also have a separate bag for my makeup. I have a really simple makeup routine. I like to keep it in a separate bag because sometimes I throw it in my backpack if I'm not gonna do my makeup until like the middle of the day or on a shoot or something. I like to keep it simple. I've just got some foundation, I've got some powders, I've got like one sponge that I clean every day. Again, like a bunch of different sunscreens. Um, yeah, just blush, a little bit of mascara. I keep it really simple. And before we continue with my backpack and carry-on setup, I wanna thank the sponsor of this video, Trip to Travel Gear. I've been using their packing cubes on this trip and they have been a total game changer. These are the bucket list compression cubes and I love that they are inspired by some of the most beautiful landmarks around the world. They're made out of a sturdy quality material and there's even a shoe bag to keep your other items clean. I've been absolutely loving the toiletry set. It's a three piece in one, which is a great deal. The liquids bag is also TSA approved, which makes security so easy. The hook on the toiletry bag is great for on the go because you don't need any counter space. The side pockets on the toiletry bag are great for your razor or toothbrush. This is one of the first times I have ever traveled fully using packing cubes and I can honestly say that I will never be going back. These are also a great gift for the holiday seasons if you want to gift the promise of travel. So don't forget to check out the link in my description to learn more about trip to travel gear. Oh, sorry, wrong take. <laughs> All right, so next up we have my carry-on setup. And I actually, to be honest with you, one of the reasons why I always take a carry-on with me is not always because I really, really need the extra room, but because I have some pretty bad back problems and carrying really heavy backpack with all my camera gear on my shoulders for months at a time really has messed up my back a lot. So it's really important, especially from the direction of my chiropractic and my physical train, my uh, physical therapist, so that I need to keep stuff off my shoulders as much as possible. So I got a backpack that has a slip in underneath that I can just slide it right on top of my carry-on and no longer have to carry my backpack on my back. I'm only 25 years old and I am aging rapidly <laughs> as far as my spine health. So I'm trying to take care of that. But anyway, inside of this carry-on, got kind of a little surprise. It's a giant sari that I bought recently in India. And this thing is taking up a crazy amount of room but one of the reasons why i love having some extra space is for just being able to pick up souvenirs and things that i want to remember my trips by and i am also very prepared for my next indian wedding so other than that i have some of my extra shoes which i'm carrying in the shoe bag to keep everything nice and clean again i've got a little bit of a fancier heel and I also have a more warm winter oriented hiking boot that is also really convenient to have when I'm in a country like Bhutan and I'm about to go on a crazy hike tomorrow. So yeah, stay tuned for that one. But on the other side, I really split my gear between my backpack and my carry-on. Anything that's not necessarily essential, I put in my carry-on, but things like my camera, my laptop, my hard drives, I always make sure to have in my backpack so that I'm never separated from it. Whatever you do, never, ever, ever, ever check 
camera, laptop, or hard drives. Most importantly, hard drives. So don't lose any of your memories. But in here, I've got a couple of different things. This is one of my go-to little bags for exercising if there isn't a gym. I have some exercise bands. I have a jump rope in case I'm somewhere where it's not really convenient to like go on a run or anything like that. If I wanna get some exercise at night, I don't really recommend uh, running as a woman at night depending on the countries that you're in. So some good hotel room workout gear. I also have a little phone thing for my arm when I'm running. I also have, this is probably the most extravagant thing that I travel with nowadays, but is 100% necessary. And it is a massage gun. Again, like I just mentioned, I have some pretty serious neck and back pain. So this thing has been a actual lifesaver. I don't really go anywhere without a massage gun anymore. And it is, Again, a luxury, but in my case, a very necessary one. <clears throat> I also have a little book for when I want to do some reading, and I have a Polaroid camera, so I've got some extra film, as well as some setups for a lav mic, and this is also just full of all of my extra cords. I've got an extra camera battery in here. I've got every different type of cable that I would need to charge anything, different things for hard drives, all of that kind of stuff, which these are all purely just extras, but in case I ever lose anything or I lose a converter or I lose my laptop charger, I can never let my business end if I don't have the ability to charge my laptop or if I don't have the ability to charge my camera and I'm on uh, a brand shoot where I have to make sure that all of my gear is gonna be functioning at all times. I also usually travel with an extra camera body just in case, but in this case I have another physical body which is my videographer which I usually travel with, so <laughs> he's dancing behind the camera. <laughs> but. Uh, I also travel with a videographer these days, so my gear that I carry has been almost split in half because I also have another person that I work with who is sharing the load of the amount of camera gear that I have. So that is the basic overview of everything in here. Again, great for souvenirs. And then I got this backpack. It feels like I'm on a lifelong quest to find the perfect travel backpack. I still haven't found something that is like completely free of flaws and things that I wouldn't, that I would want differently. But this backpack is really great. Again, it has this uh, strap in the back so that I can slide it onto my carry-on. This one's also great because it's very much geared towards photographers and videographers. So the, the complete sides, this is a bit messy, but the complete sides of this backpack unfurl so I can find everything from each, each different compartment. In the bottom compartment, I keep the camera, which I'm filming on right now. I also have a lot of extra converters. Things like this are really important to have and a nice little separate case for my hard drives. I currently have three of these different solid state drives, which if you are traveling and you're shooting content and all of that kind of stuff, I love to have these solid state drives because there's no moving parts in them, which means that if they do get dropped a little bit, again, not saying it never happens, but the chances of them breaking are a little bit less than the hard drives that have some moving motors inside. They, are, they do tend to be a little bit more expensive, but I highly recommend I travel with three of them. I think these are all, this one's two terabytes and these are one terabyte. So got all of that. I've got an extra little case for my SD cards as well. And in the back of here, this is an essential for travel backpacks as well. I've got a nice little slip for my laptop. And in the mid part of it, I usually keep all of my cords that I need easy access to, my phone charger, my laptop charger. I also have one of these things, which is great for trying to sleep on planes or cars or anything like that. Super comfy little face mask, I always recommend. I've got a nice little separate container for my documents, my cash, my, every, like my passport, everything like that all stays in this 
very important little thing here to keep it nice and clean and separate. Always got a little tide stick to make sure that I'm not staining everything. And last but not least, I have a little travel journal. I absolutely love being able to journal and capture all of my feelings and emotions and reactions to everything that I'm seeing. It's a great thing to have as a part of your daily routine when you're traveling as well to try to keep you a little bit more sane, but I always recommend having a little journal. Sometimes I like to tape in different like stickers or postcards or different things that I find along the way. So that is almost everything. I actually have one more, one last thing, which is my day bag. I don't like to, again, carry a super heavy backpack on my back all day. And usually when I'm going out into the world, I like to just have a little day bag. This one is great because it has these two little front pockets, which are good for uh, keeping my little phone in there, stuff like that. I've got my sunglasses case, a little uh, carryable or a little uh, mini hairbrush, some hair ties, hairspray, a little bit of a theme going here, my headphones, I've got some wet wipes, and that's about it for my luggage, my, my day bag, my backpack, my carry-on. You basically seen it all. So thank you so much for watching this video. I hope that it was insightful. I have been on the road for quite some time now and I'm going to be for the foreseeable future. So if you want to see some more uh, daily updates and everything like that, I'm uh, really active right now on Instagram. So you can check out everything that I'm doing over there. Also, if you want a little bit of a behind the scenes look at everything that I'm doing as well as bucket list, travel recommendations, uh, travel hacks, all of those kind of things, you can sign up for my newsletter at LexiLimitless.com newsletter and until next time let's push our limits <laughs>